Welcome back to the Obsession Engineering Aprilia Tuono project. In part one, I was struggling to get the bike to start. So now I'm going to delve into the fuel injection system and see if I can find the fault. So after a little bit of checking overnight, because I'm fairly sure it's an injector circuit thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that the injector is actually getting 12 volts when the fuel pump primes. And if that is, then I'm going to check the... Um, cam position sensor because the cam position sensor tells the injection system when to fire so they're my two checks today and then i'll uh, see where we are well with the ignition turned on i'm getting over 10 volts at the connector so that's probably healthy enough and so the next thing i'm going to do is check the um, pickup sensor on the cam this is a cam position sensor and it's what they call a hall sensor and it works off magnetic uh, current or something along those lines and basically what happened is there's a little metal probe that sticks out from the camshaft and as it passes past the front of the sensor the magnetic current in here basically acts like a switch and you get 12 volts um, going through the third pin that you can see in there so you have a positive and negative supply all the time and then you have a third pin and when the third pin gets a 12 volt supply to it that proves that the circuit's working or not. So I've been able to test it by connecting the probe into the middle um, pin on the, there, and then as I pass the spanner next to it, we actually get 12 volts in it. So that sensor is working. So I've given it a bit of a clean up. I shall put it back in the bike, and if that doesn't work, uh, I'm back to scratching my head a little bit. Because I've been head scratching a bit and undoing and doing quite a few bits, I thought I'd go back to the old trick of pouring more brake cleaner down the inlets and seeing if it started. And it did actually start, and then it seemed to actually run on one cylinder, on the back cylinder. So what I actually think is possibly it's actually the injectors that have been bunged up all along. Now, although that seems like a fairly simple thing to sort out, a bunged up injector, um, it means I've got to take the throttle bodies off, split them, take the injectors out of them, ultrasonic them, and then put them back together. Uh, luckily, the nice chaps at Aprilia Tech uh, actually do a, uh, a gasket set for them for not stupid money. So I think that's the next trick, but I might have one more go at having it running first. I've just had it running for a few seconds, and if I do that, you can see we've got fuel vapour coming out of the back cylinder, but not the front cylinder. So the front cylinder injector is obviously still blocked because that one only runs when I squirt brake cleaner down it, but that one runs quite happily without. So I'm going to take both injectors out and clean them both. But what I also noticed was we had a dashboard fault because the uh, voltage dropped from 12 volts down to 9 when I was running. So that indicates to me that it's not charging, even though uh, it's had a new reg rec on from the previous owner. But these bikes are prone for the stators. So I'm charging the battery up again. That can charge up while I'm trying to sort the injector issue. And uh, then, when I've got it running properly, on two cylinders, I can start looking into the uh, stator issue. Now that I've got the airbox disconnected, all I've got to do is disconnect the injector wires, the throttle cables up here, and a couple of uh, pipes and bits, and then I can take the whole throttle body assembly off, put it on the bench, and uh, I'll just have to take a couple of covers off and bits to get the injectors out. So I've got the throttle bodies on the bench now, now this is the injector. So if I undo these screws, I can take this plate off and I can pull the injector out and then I can go and get that ultrasonic clean down at Carrot Cycles. And then I'll just need some gaskets to go under here that the guys from Aprilia Tech do. So it should be, hopefully, fairly straightforward. So I've got the two injectors out of the throttle bodies and I've also got the pressure relief valve which I'll ultrasonic clean, all of those. And then I'll just need to replace these gaskets that hold the uh, injectors onto the throttle bodies uh, but those are available from Aprilia Tech so I shall be back when I've got all of that done while I wait for the uh, gaskets to turn up so I can put my uh, throttle bodies back together with my new ultrasonic cleaned injectors I'm going to give the bike a bit of a wash I mean it's quite a well looked after bike it's got full service history and bits but you can see there's the usual bits of chain lube and general dirt and bits all over it so, I'm going to do this, give it a good clean with some degrease from bits. I should have really done this to begin with, but I was all excited to see if I could get it to start. 
that excitement sort of slipped away after the first day. Um, so yeah, I've covered everything in plastic so it doesn't get wet, all the open electrical connectors in the inlets, because I want to get around everywhere and clean it all properly. So that's it. I'm going to get some degreaser on the go and then a bucket and sponge and make it like new, hopefully. That's stage one of cleaning done. I've uh, degreased the worst bits and then um, I've gone around and just given them a sort of a bucket and sponge wash for the rest of it. And you can see sort of down here, around the back of the engine, it's come up really nicely. The advantage to having a massive chain loop spread over everything is it does actually preserve everything. So, although everything looks better when it's wet, that is considerably better. Um, when it dries off in the sunshine, uh, I'll probably go around and do a second coat around the uh, shop linkage of the bits that they've come up okay but not perfect. But yeah, generally, for first wash, that's come up pretty good. The next thing I'm going to check is the uh, resistance across the phases of the stator. So even though the stator is on the left hand side of the bike, this brown plug that connects into the reg rec is on the right hand side of the bike. So what I'm going to do is disconnect this and put a multimeter across the, free, the three phases of the alternator, the stator, and see what resistance we've got, because that might give us a clue as the health of the stator. So one thing I have noticed is we have the plug I originally found, and then that has a very short lead up to a second plug. So I'm guessing at some point it's had a um, aftermarket generator uh, stator fitted to it, which is a bit odd. Now the winding resistance is meant to be 4 ohms, and when I've measured it I've got sort of 10 ohms, which doesn't strike me as horrendous, but I might just whip the cover off it and have a look anyway. So back around the left hand side I want to take the stator cover off and check the actual state of the stator underneath it. So I'm going to drain the oil out of it, take the oil tank off, because these are dry sump though, so it has an oil tank, not really a normal sump. I shall drain the oil out of there as well so the engine's clear, and then I can take the cover off and see what the actual stator looks like. So that's the alternator cover removed, and the stator's horrible and black and burnt. Um, obviously it will have a bit of colour on it from being set in oil that's hot, but that looks um, like it's been far too hot, so I think it's probably fairly safe to say that that is cream crackered. Luckily there are lots and lots of versions of it available on the internet, so I shall dive on there and get something bought. Thanks for watching and join me again next time when I actually put something back together for a change.